Let's have a picture with you and your, and your is it, what is it? A tri what are they calling it? Trike. Trike, sorry mate. Trike. Three wheels. Let's get a picture of you and your trike. Look at this guy. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. In this video we're going to be talking about the Sunny 16 rule or the F8 and B there rule. Stick around, I'll show you what I was up to testing it out. I'll show you some of the results that I've got so far. So this time I'm going to use the scrim to, to stop the highlights on these chrome bumpers. I'm going to go to F11, um, not F16, because the sun's going to be slightly diffused. So let's see what we get with that, F11. There you go, it's just stopping that sun shining so much. Oh, and you can see by using the scrim, just uh, cuts that chrome down. Theme rule, the rule of thumb is you set your shutter speed, set your, shutter, <laughs> set your shutter speed to the same speed as your film. So if you're shooting a 100 speed film, set your shutter speed to 100 if it's got 100 or 125, which would be its closest in some of these cameras. If you're shooting a 400 speed film, set it to 500. And then you just rely on your aperture for the rest of the day by shooting f16 if it's really bright and sunny no clouds in the sky f16 f11 if it's a little bit hazy up there f8 if it's a little bit a little bit darker overcast f5.6 if it's a bit gloomy f4 maybe i did do a poll the other day on my channel and i asked people what they thought of the sunny 16 rule unfortunately i can't get no signal on my phone so i can't tell you what was going on but i'll quickly uh, show you that now and narrate it while i'm back at home there's a woman behind me. <laughs> She's been screaming at some bird up in the tree for the last uh, five minutes, right? She's meant to be doing a show with this bird and it's just sitting up in the tree. He ain't coming down. <laughs> Sunny 16 rule, do you use it? Can you use it? I've read a lot of mixed feelings, etc., etc., and I've got 724 votes back so far at the time of making this video. 11% uh, of you said you'd never use it, you like accuracy. I get that because when I shoot 4x5 or anything else that, you know, medium format, I want to seascape to landscapes, I'll take my light meter and do some metering, be it um, incident or spot. So I totally get that. 11% of you again said you always use the Sunny 16 rule. Um, I'd be interested to know what sort of photographers you guys are. And 71%, uh, a whopping 71% said they sometimes use it. 4% said they did once, but never again. So I can only <laughs> suspect that they've gone out, shot the Sunny 16, buggered it all up and went, I ain't doing that again. And 2% of you said that you'd never heard of it. Is it a drink? So um, I don't know if that 2% was winding me up, but maybe they haven't. So it was interesting. And uh, have a look at that thread because there's loads of interesting comments on there as well for you to read if you're interested. Is it me? Is it because of me? No. You saw a dog. Oh, we saw a dog, right. <laughs> I didn't know if it was my fault. Okay. <laughs> still, still stuck that bird. Anyway. <laughs> Gandalf. Go on, Gandalf. Get down, kid. And with all that said, I was going to a car show, so I thought it'd be great fun to shoot this car show on the FM3A using the Sunny 16 rule. And although this has got a meter inside, I took the batteries out so, it did, so I couldn't look through and cheat. And uh, I went to the car show and decided to shoot uh, my gut instinct using the Sunny 16 rule for the whole day. So I'm not trying to look like a rapper, guys. I've got this cap on to stop my bald head getting sunburnt. And uh, obviously I can't look through the, 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 the viewfinder when I've got a peak on the top. But anyway, I put the Ilford Delta 100 inside the camera. And I'll set the shutter speed to 125. You guys might have 100 on yours. Um, I don't, so I'm going to set it to the nearest. This is 125. And I'm going to shoot uh, four photographs at F16. After that, I'm going to then shoot four photographs at F8 and see what sort of difference there is. There will be some sort of difference. Um, obviously, the F8 is going to be slightly more overexposed, but we'll see uh, the negatives handle it. Um, and I've put a 28mm wide lens on, so intending to get some people looking at cars. Now I've got the opportunity to do focusing through the viewfinder or through the lens, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do zone focusing. So I'm just going to set a uh, zone in on the uh, lens itself, 
So then I don't have to worry about apertures, light meters. I don't even have to worry about focusing. I can just pick up, click and go. And if I'm out, my focusing is out, you know, by a smidge or two uh, on, 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 on a distant scale, F16 should easily handle that. Just some people looking at cars there. That's one shot. Hello, all right. Hello there. How are you? Very good, thank you. Oh, bless you. Is this a Dolomite? Yeah. No. Oh, it's a Herald. Oh, wow. Enjoy your day. Don't get too hot under there. You take a picture of people. Just a little chat afterwards. Doesn't hurt, you know. Makes them feel more comfortable. They knew I took a picture of them. But she was in shade. Uh, so I wanted to get that shot there. So little, see, you know, see what the contrast does. A couple of guys staring at their machine. Look. So that was four shots taken at F16. Let's now go to F8, which is uh, we call F8 don't be late or F8 and be there and uh, see how they compare. I'm not going to go to F11 because there's no point. I'm going to F16 and F8. So it's something that I don't often do because most of my cameras such as the Nikon FM3A um, and other cameras I've got, not these three, I've got light meters inside, they're very good. So there's no reason for me not to use the light meters inside the cameras, but sometimes you can get caught short, or sometimes you've got cameras that haven't got light meters in, such as this Franca Salida 6x6 folding camera. There goes my microphone, pick that back up. And also this Kodak Retinet as well. The Shinon CS camera that I've got, the light meter doesn't work in this. So my only options with these is to take a light meter out with me or take my phone, which I've got a light meter at. Both work very well. But sometimes you don't really want to be faffing about with a light meter if you haven't got one inside the camera or if you're not in auto mode, you're in fully manual, your light meter don't work in your camera. You don't really want to keep faffing about with this. So I suppose learning a sunny 16 rule or rather learning to read light and what settings to dial into your camera can be quite a handy thing when you're a photographer, especially if you're doing street photography or any reportage stuff or protests or, or documentary sort of work, sort of stuff like that. So I've now set the camera to F8. Let's do this. Let's get these guys behind their machine. See the two guys there? Get them in the frame as well as the machine. That's interesting because there's some contrast going on here, you see. That's in highlight, that's in contrast to F8. That F8, I mean, anticipating that to be slightly overexposed, so in the real world, that's going to be quite contrasty, that shot, but it's still a photograph. If that was something of a moment that you captured that you couldn't ever capture again, you'd rather have one photograph than none at all because you missed it, faffing around with your light meter and your aperture. Oh, look at these cars. Wow. Oh yeah, all right, nice hat. <laughs> Get a picture of your dogs, mate, is that all right? Come back a bit more. <laughs> Thank you, cheers. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Hello, are they going to bite my finger? So I've taken a few pictures there. F8, don't be late. Let's do one more, F8. And then I'll change things around a bit. I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. There's a band. <laughs> so I'm sorry if the GoPro's been a bit wonky, but I'm trying to shoot in one hand and hold the GoPro in the other. Uh, let's change things around. I'll show you what I'm going to do. As I was shooting, I think I accidentally nudged the uh, focus rings. I don't know if any of those come out a little bit out of focus. They shouldn't have done. Um, but I'm in shade now. Look, these old uh, army truck wheels here. So I'm in shade. I'll show you. So you can see those are in shade and I'm going to try and do a 5.6 not sure how that will come out 
So I've come into the shade, it's actually quite darker than shade, so I think I'm going to go to F4 and take this picture. I'm going to use the um, focusing because that's the best way. At F4, I'm not really going to have much um, scope on the, on the distance scale, but we'll try this anyway. F4, I reckon. F5.6 will probably be a bit too dark. Uh, underexposed. Oh, it smells of gasoline. Go on, right next to the gas tank, that's why. So let's try a few more in shade. So we've got shade there, a little tiny bit of highlight going on at the bottom, but nothing major. Um, F4 again. All right, mate. Again. Yeah, back again. Let me take a picture of this guy. And I reckon he's qu quite dark inside here, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to go to 2.8. I'm just showing my. I'm just showing me friends. You're getting technical now. 2.8. You got it. <laughs> Hang on. There you go. 2.8. There you go. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> He's a car, doesn't he? So it's quite dark. I wouldn't say that was light. Um, I wouldn't say that was really overcast. That was, that was quite dark. Oh, what else do you get for Christmas? <laughs> so as well as a sunny 16, you've also got what they call F8 and B there. I don't quite know where that came from. It's a saying, but if you're shooting uh, street photography, protest or whatever, and the day's like today at the moment, it's kind of a little tiny bit overcast, very light, still quite bright if you look up towards the sun. Just stick your camera in F8, put it on zone focusing so you've, you can already uh, shoot whatever comes into your distance or zone, what you've dialed into the uh, lens, and then go off and shoot. It's like no fuss photography. So if you're shooting street photography or protest or documenting something and you don't, bloody van. Now look at me, I'm a, I'm a delivery driver, sorry. <laughs> Right, he's gone now. Yeah, so if you're kind of documenting something on the streets or a protest or something, and you haven't got time to be sitting there mucking about with light meters or focusing, just set your zone or your distance into the lens. So for example, anything between two meters and infinity will be in focus. Choose F8 and just shoot away to your heart's content. If the sun pops out, it gets a bit bright, your negative might be a bit overexposed, but all those negatives, especially with films today, can be easily recovered. With digital, if you start blowing out it's much harder, but with film, you can overexpose two, three, four, five stops, even six, and still manage to get uh, relatively good negatives, or at least enough to show a story, whatever you photographed. So this area here, got some mottled sunlight coming in from the trees up there. Um, but this area here is, I would say, kind of like a, not light overcast, probably a bit more heavier than that. So I'm gonna go to 5.6 and take the shot and see what it does. There you go, 5.6. F11. I'll get a quick snap of you guys, with your trumpets. F8 and don't be late, he says. So it says here. Hang on. Just come into the shade a bit more. Your sunlight's right down there. A little bit more. That's it, there you go. The sunlight was just uh, attacking you. I'm trying to focus my little finger. There we go. Okay, guys, one, two. Lovely, thank you so much. Right, Cheers, thank you. Thank you. Good, thank you. good sound. Thank you. So at the moment, while that sun is behind that cloud, it's not exactly ultra bright. So I think we're looking around about, I'd say F, F8 territory. There's no shadows on the floor at all going on. And now it's just starting to come through and you can see the shadows coming through. Now we're into kind of like F, I'd say F11 territory. You can just see that shadow is a little bit soft. And the sun's just going back in now. But when it's at its brightest, that shadow is really harsh and uh, sharp. That's when you're in your F-16 territory. So that's what I've been looking at is the shadows and, and the light falling upon the subjects that I've been doing. And then I've been looking at car interiors as well. So I've been taking car interiors and like this one here. I've been coming to kind of F-4s inside the car interiors. This one here, probably 2.8. It's got lots of um, shadow going on. And another way to look at Sunny 16 is 
when you're looking up at the sky to try and figure out whether you're going to shoot f16 11 or 8 you look up at the sun it's going to bang your eyes out if it's super bright but other times you know i'm not scientific with how the weather works and stuff uh but sometimes there's a bit of a heavy atmosphere or maybe a bit more haze on the sun um than you'd expect if you're looking straight ahead you'd still think that you're in the sunny 16 zone but the best way to determine that is look down at the floor and see the shadows if it's a bright sunny day and there's no clouds and it's super bright you'll get these hard sharp looking shadows if there's a little bit of haze up there and you look down and look at the shadows again they'll be a little tiny bit softer and softer still and softer still as the uh, as the light isn't so intense so always have a little look at the shadows that's what i do and determine from there but generally if you're shooting f16 f11 and f8 on a day like today um, you're not really going to go wrong and you'll be able to shoot a lot quicker but i'd always recommend using a light meter or your phone app if you really do want to make sure even if you wanted to take a quick meter reading now and go okay this is what this is what the day is going to be like it ain't changing so i'll just take a meter reading now and then shoot the rest of the day from that very first meter reading <laughs> So I had a fantastic time at the car show, chatting to people and taking photographs, things that I like doing. And uh, when I got back, I started to develop the film and I made the most stupidest of mistakes. I was using Rodnol and usually for a 35 mil film, I'll mix up a 500 milliliter soup and go one part to 50. So 10 milliliters of Rodnol in 500 milliliters of water will nicely develop one of my 35 mil films, uh, the ones that I'm shooting. However, I decided to have two tanks and what I did I mixed up 1000 milliliter soup 500 for each one I only put 10 milliliters of Rodnol in that 1000 milliliters of water I should have put 20 but I only went 10 and I ended up developing it but I guess that's one of the good things that I like about my channel is I can make mistakes and if I do I like to show them because we all make mistakes I don't have to show it but I'm going to um, because I suppose it proves that you know our um, how much you can make mistakes with these films even if you're shooting exposures or even if you're developing and still get decent reasonable results and you can see what i mean when i underdeveloped the negatives this is the agfa apx i shot uh, only has five milliliters of rodnol as well as the ilford delta 100 and the um the, the uh, rebate edge markings there uh, not as dark as they should be on either film. I wasn't too happy with the development and I wanted to see some good negatives out of it. So this time I went out again with the FM3A 28mm lens, had a little walk around my village and did some more photographs. I'll show you that now. I didn't take the microphone, I just took the GoPro, put it on top of the camera and showed you exactly what I was taking pictures of and what apertures I was shooting. And when I got back, I developed them correctly. So I've now got decent legs to look at as the example. And now you can see the new APX 100 um, that I shot there new in uh, 10 milliliters of Rodnol that one's come out as expected nice and dense so this is the one I was shooting around my village you can see loads of density in there and they look okay all of them so going down this lane here you can see the shadows aren't harsh they're kind of soft they're there so I reckon again this is an F8 territory a light overcast not 16, not 11. I'm going to go to F8 and don't be late. It's probably the safest bet if I want to do any street photography. Another shot F8. Done. So now the sun's started to come out even more. I wouldn't say it's super bright. It's up there. But it's not super bright. I would say more so possibly F11 territory. But you can see the shadows underneath the car. You can see me a little bit sharper than earlier on. And I know it's bright because it, I can feel it on the back of my head. It's a little bit warm but let's shoot this one f8 nonetheless this car with loads of bird shit on it nothing fancy so that's f8 if you thought that was a sunny 16 let's shoot it at 16 and see what happens in fact the sun's just got a little bit brighter i don't know if you notice but these shadows are now a bit harsher than they were earlier 
I'm going to take three shots of this car 16, 11, and 8. 16, 11, one more, 8. So for this second test, I know that it's, it's quite sunny at the moment. I'm just going to keep shooting F8, whether the sun goes in or out, uh, for the half of the roll. And then I'm going to shoot what I think is F8, 11 or 16, depending on the brightness of that sun when it's coming down. And I'm looking at, uh, I can feel the sun on, my, on the side of my face here. Earlier on, I couldn't. But I'm also looking at the shadows as well, see how harsh the shadows are. I'm going to continue doing F8, like I said, and just see. If F8, I won't be late. <laughs> F8, don't be late. So, I'm now in a shadow area. There's a massive tree up there, and it's giving me these shadows. I'm still gonna shoot F8 on this tire and see what happens. I reckon that's probably a 5.6, but we've taken it anyway. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. He charges you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> What's he going to spend on juice? <laughs> Gorgeous dog. So that was my last shot at F8. Let's have a look at some shade. So I've got this area here. There's some highlights going on. I can see that. But the sun is now behind those trees up there, which means I'm in shade. So if you was doing any street photography or whatever, and you found yourself down an alley or, or, or in this sort of situation, I need to take a shot of these areas here. So I'm going to go F5.6 and take a shot. So I'm back out in sunny 16 territory now. You can see my shadow, it's quite sharp. Uh, and the sun is not as bright so I'm going to take a shot here at f11 and let's do the same shot again at f16 just to convince ourselves only one stop darker so we've got some water there it's not uh, it's not really totally over bright but if it was, then I'd be at F22, same as snow. If you've got snow, go for F22. Or bright water, F22. But this isn't that bright, so I reckon I'm gonna go for F11 on this scene. It doesn't look super bright. F11. Let's have a look at the waterfall. Now this looks quite bright, I think the sun's just popped itself out again. It's quite loud here with that waterfall. Um, so I'm going to go to F16 here. You can see the shadows there, look, starting to pop through quite sharp. And that sun has come out again quite, quite bright, although it's still behind a very thin layer of haze. I'm still going to go F16 because I've got all that water, the white water there. It's come down a bit. Say no to beavers in the background. No beavers. There you go. F16, so we've got some shade going on as well, so that'll probably be quite dark. <laughs> so with all those different exposures done, I'm now gonna, uh, I've got about six shots left, so I'm just gonna go to F8. As I say, F8, don't be late, or F8, never late. It just means that if you, you know, F8, if you're overexposed by a couple of stops, so be it, you can easily get that back. But I'd rather overexpose than miss any of the action if I was doing street photography, if I was doing any protesting or whatever. It just saves time faffing about with the light meter and also setting your zone in as well. So I'm gonna do exactly that, set my zone in, uh, which will just be um, infinite. So on this lens, let's have a look. So on this lens, it tells me that F8, anything between two meters and far out in the distance, infinite, is gonna be in focus. So I know where to plot any of my subjects as long as it's after two meters or the shortest distance will be two meters. 
F8 can't go wrong. So the Sunny 16 rule, it's been out for donkeys and I sometimes use it if I haven't got a light meter or my phone with me. It's sort of not often I haven't got my phone, but uh, I'll just use a Sunny 16 rule, especially if I'm on the streets or if I'm doing some sort of reportage kind of photography and I can't be bothered to keep getting out my light meter to check and I'm using one of these cameras. Um, I'll just shoot at F8 or F11 and, and see how I go from there. If it's a bit bright, F16, if I run into a shady area, maybe F5.6 or F4 and, uh, and see what I get when I start developing. But at least that way I can keep up with the action, whatever I'm photographing and don't have to worry about the metering all the time. And I also stick in the lenses zone focusing. So anything that falls kind of two meters and further, I know it's gonna be relatively uh, in focus. So that's kind of what I go for and I can shoot a lot faster. With these cameras, they got light meters built in. So there's no need for me to use the Sunny 16 rule unless I just wanna um, challenge myself and see you know, arrow get on and, and knowing the light and stuff like that. But even with these cameras, if I've got, um, not, not this one, but other cameras have got autofocus. So, you know, you can get a light meter and autofocus, you can shoot just as quick. But if you want to take these sort of cameras out, or this one here, for example, I said the light meter ain't working, then, um, you know, using the Sunny 16 or a bit of zone focusing, will get you uh, in amongst the action without missing anything. So uh, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let us know in the comments as always what you think. Do you shoot the Sunny 16? Do you, do you shoot F8 and V there? Let me know. I've dropped the microphone. I'll catch you later. <laughs> Bloody thing. Oh, and you can see by using the screen, just uh, cuts that chrome down. Well, it's a lot of pain in the ass when you're on your own.